Morning. Let's get a brew day started. I didn't come to start no trouble. boil kettle because it has uh, 220 electric elements in there to heat up my strike water. I'm going to fill this pretty much, get it heated up, and then I'm going to transfer it over to my hot liquor tank. All right, the kids are gone. I got a cup of coffee in. I've been warming up my strike water. Uh, I put 16 gallons into my boil kettle and uh, Sweet rolls this morning took a little bit longer than I anticipated, so I'm sitting at about 180 degrees. My goal is to mash in at 158, so I will lose some temperature while I transfer it over to the mash tun, so I think I'm just gonna chuck it, my six gallons into the mash tun, and then just watch the thermometer and wait till it drops to about 158, then I'll mash in. All right. Just go through a second here. I got a 15 gallon kettle that's gonna be my hot liquor tank. Um, got a temperature probe on there. I got the immersion chiller. I have a Bayou Classic, like raised false bottom in there that raises it above my heating element. And then I have my boil kettle, it's a 20 gallon. I got a sight glass on there. Um, this one's pretty standard. I got 220 volt element going in there. Here's the element. Uh, all the spike pickup tubes down there for whirlpooling and stuff when I'm done. The mash tun. Um, thermometer. Got the temp probe on there to back up my judgments for my temps. Got the recirculation port on top, which I drilled, and the Blickman spar arm. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting, I'm just gonna add some cold water to my mash tun to bring the temperature down. Uh, that's no problem at all. And then I'm pumping the hot water into the hot liquor tank, getting it out of my boil kettle. And then this is gonna already be hot water. Uh, it should be just about what I need it to be for mashing, recirculating through the Herms, the Herms coil. I'm sitting at about 159, so I'm gonna go ahead and mash in. I got all my hoses hooked up to go through the immersion chiller as my makeshift Herms coil. Um, that is a little bit warm, I guess. It's sitting at about 160, so if I raise it too much, I won't click this on until um, I fall out of my temp range, I guess, so I'm, I'm gonna mash in at 158 and hopefully maintain my mash at about 152. Nice mesh panel, mix that baby up. Make sure there's no dough balls. Looks pretty good. Clean the little giblets off of my uh, sparge arm. And, man, I'm sitting right at about 152. Uh, Beersmith is amazing. Um, thanks, Beersmith. So I'm gonna mix this up, put the top on, and now comes the time basically where I just recirculate my mash, and hopefully it, it balances itself out. I'm just gonna hit go and see what happens. Make sure all my quick neck fittings are tight. Pump should be good. Click around, see what happens. Looks good. Let's see. I'm sitting at 150. I actually have uh, the temperature on my controller turned off, so let's go ahead and 
I guess we'll just turn it all the way up. So the thermometer is reading 150, the temperature probe is saying 146. 47. I'll just kind of monitor that and see what's uh, happening. As long as I stay at around 150, 152, I'll be really happy. Right about now might be a good time to kind of pull your uh, yeast starter out of the fridge. I got a nice little layer of yeast down there. That's good. Looks good. Looks healthy. I was a little bit worried because it was a little bit old, but um, I want this to slowly warm up to room temperature. I'll actually probably put it on the other side of the basement. That way... Um, it's not exposed to all the brewing heat because it gets pretty warm down here. And then uh, when I'm ready to pitch, I'll just decant this, slurry it up, and dump it in. You can never really be too prepared. So ahead of time, I like to take my hops. And while I'm doing the mash or whatever, whether I'm sparging, um, I like to get it all measured out. I got these little Dixie cups that I usually have marked. And then... Uh, when you have them all weighed out, it's easy to just grab them during the boil and chuck them in there. So I got uh, one ounce at Whirlpool. At 10 minutes, I have half an ounce. And then for the bittering edition, I have half an ounce. And then there should be an ounce left in here and I will uh, throw that in a Ziploc bag, throw it in a freezer pack and save that for my dry hop. And because water chemistry is something that I'm not really used to doing all the time, I forgot to add my gypsum and thing, so it's never too late. It's recirculating anyway, that'll just let it mix itself. So, we are 10 minutes in, I just wanted to show you that, first of all, forgive my crooked thermometer, but that's sitting at about 152, this one's sitting at about 152, and I actually have this going, I just have it set to 148, I think eventually I'm going to have to mess with this, but um, last night I was dead on, we'll see what happens. All right, so here I am, nine minutes left. Pretty happy. Sitting at about 150. I don't think I'm gonna have enough juice with my 120 element to get my hot liquor tank up to 168. I mean, I just don't see that happening. I'm at, I just turned it to full power. The heating element is on. We'll see what happens. So if I can't get this kettle up to a mash out temperatures in my hot liquor tank, then uh, there's a little bit of an issue because I'm not going to be sitting at my recommended sparge water temperature of 168. Ideally that'd be nice if I could get both of these up to mash out temperatures and then I'd be sitting at 168, 168, I just sparge with 168 and I'm done. But I might just have to sparge with 152 degree water. And Okay, here we go. We're about to fly sparge. This is probably the most intense part of this whole process. I got the mash ton going down into my pump that leads up to the boil kettle in the hot liquor tank, down to the pump, and it goes back into the mash ton. What you really gotta watch here is that you don't drain the mash ton too fast you got to keep them kind of slow so I'm gonna throttle back the mash or the sparge and I'm gonna throttle back what's going into the kettle this is gonna be the one that I'm gonna watch the closest so I'm gonna go ahead and basically put both the pumps on um, you can see there's already liquid in the lines they're just waiting for me to flip them on so um, the auto sparge will help me control that is super nice okay kind of cool is while I was messing around with the hoses and stuff I am up to about 158 from our sparge temperature so here we go 
I guess I'm ready. Let's get pumping here. It's a little bit intense. Slow that down a little bit. That's probably a little bit intense too. I really want to go as slow as possible. Let that baby just kind of trickle in there. This isn't really lowering at a crazy rate either. I'm gonna throttle this hot liquor tank back a little bit. So it's not crazy, that's good. This should be a really slow process. I'm gonna throttle this back a little bit more. I'm gonna throttle this back a little bit more too. Slow, slow is good. You should always, while I'm doing a little public service announcement here, should always throttle back or control what's going in um, after the pump. You don't want to be running your pump dry or anything like that. So that's why I control them up here on the tops of the kettles. So let's check it out. That's slowly going in. This is very slowly going in too. And then while I'm doing this, I can actually start kicking on the element and getting that baby up to boiling temperatures. All right, so I wanna be at a 7.32 gallons. So I'm gonna let this run until I'm at 7.32, and then I'll basically kick her off. I should have plenty of water in my hot liquor tank to get this done. This is very slowly trickling out, which is good. Just trickling. Um, I wanna keep a nice layer of water on top of the grain bed, but I don't want to get it too close down there. So you really gotta sit here and kind of watch what's going on. At some point I do stop the pump, getting pretty close to my volume. So I'm just gonna let gravity kind of do its work, also my pump. So there's no need to drain any more water out of my hot liquor tank. This would just be my cleaning water. And then, yeah, we'll just wait until my boil kettle is up to its volume. We're really, really close, so. Really close. And I'll start to boil. All right, so last thing I do when I mash is I dump my grains into the compost pile to be used for fertilizer for my hops. The other thing that you can do is scoop your grain into a dehydrator and dehydrate it and uh, use it for bread later, or you, if you don't use all the grain, then you can just put it in a food processor and use the flour. I know you're gonna dig this to the this. <laughs> 